secret technique. Ooh, what is it? I want to hear. Well, I was really fortunate a few years ago in our tour of New Zealand to visit a gentleman that, well, I guess the best way to characterize him is a bit of an eccentric. And eccentric is great because it's people who aren't in the normal mold. And this gentleman was Mr. Fred Fields. And I was fortunate because I think he saw, you know, this guy comes from the other side of the world, from Canada. Yeah, you know what? I can talk a bit about what I do. And Mr. Fields had developed a technique he called programming seeds. And I was really fortunate because he showed me results. And the one that absolutely floored me was the results of eucalyptus seeds that were programmed versus those that were not programmed, that were planted side by side 17 years before. So eucalypts grow quite quickly in New Zealand, and so he'd get these eucalypt tree that was about like this, and it was, yeah, that's pretty good for a 17-year-old tree, non-programmed. And then the other tree next to it, same soil, same condition, same rainfall, same everything. That tree, you could bear, I, I couldn't, I was about like this. I mean, I thought, wait a minute, the other one did well, and this one was like this. It was easily three times or four times the size. And it was a program tree. And it was like, what in the world happened? 17 years old. And he showed me he had cut some down and he was selling them for veneer. They were being peeled off as veneer. He showed me, and I'd never seen growth rings like that. Each ring was an inch. You know, usually you see a tree ring and there's these, you know, bands. And in our climate, sometimes they're pretty tight. But this was from one year to the next, there was one inch. It was like one inch of growth per year. That was staggering. So I wanted to find out more. And so he went on to explain to me that in the life of a seed, or rather in the life of the species, that species has gone through many, many, many extremes, soils, climates. Why? Because it hasn't been around for a thousand years or 10,000 years or a hundred thousand years. Most seeds have been around probably millions of years. And they've survived all kinds of situations and extremes. And he said, in all those years, that seed has been accumulating experience that it locks into its genetic code. And he explained to me that if you can imagine a bank of switches, a huge bank, imagine a wall of switches. Those switches are the genetic ability of that plant. And so if it happens that the plant is at the very northern limit of where it can grow. Well, the switch for cold, short season, better be turned on or that plant won't survive. As the same thing in the southern extreme for that plant, it better have its tolerance to hot summers turned on. And so he said, we can program or direct that seed to give us characteristics that are very, very good if we want to grow that plant so that it will really grow well. And so the example that he gave me was for those trees. He said all he did was he took the poorest soil he could get. Now this is, on our farm, this is the poorest soil we can get. It's pure white beach sand. I mean, it's not quite white, white, but it's, it's pure sand. There's nothing, there's no organic matter in it. It doesn't hold water. We'll see that in soils. And this soil is like, yeah, it's, you know, there's not a lot of things that want to grow in this soil. So what Mr. Fields would do is he would take this soil and he would fill a pot with just this soil. 
Imagine taking our seeds, we're putting it in a nice growing medium, but he said no. He said you take the seed and you plant it in the absolute poorest soil you could find, and then you give it the absolute minimum amount of water that it needs just to germinate and survive. Not thrive, just survive. So he says, what happens? Have you ever seen a seed starting? So he explained to me that that seed, when it starts and it first pokes out the end, it sends out first, it goes down. And that I've always understood. That the seed, you never see the results. You're seeing something underground, something invisible first. It looks like the seed hasn't moved, but in fact, it sent out its first root, and that root goes down. And he said that first root is really the environmental sensor. It's what goes out and says, imagine the seed in the, the rest of the package in the seed. It's going, hey, sensor. What's it like out there? And the sensor is checking it out and it goes, hmm, it's really poor out here. There is not much and it's really dry in here. It's not a great situation. So you better turn on the switch for very dry and very poor soil. So he says, you do that, you just keep that plant surviving, you grow it in the pot for two months, and then you take that plant and you transplant it into a much better soil. It's not hard to be much better than the absolute poorest. So what happens? But first, if you're enjoying this video and you'd like to see the rest of this course, head on over to permaculture.study or click the link in the description to continue learning today. And now back to the video. That plant says, okay, you know what? Somebody switched on poor soil and almost no water. I can grow and survive in poor, dry conditions. And all of a sudden it's put into a medium soil with normal amount of water. The plant goes, wow, look at the abundance out here. I mean, I can really perform on this conditions. I don't know how I won the lottery, but you know what? I'm going to make the most of these conditions now. And then the plant just excels. It gives you a log like this in 17 years. How come? Because plants don't change situations in most cases. They have all those switches. They have all these genes. They have the ability to grow in so many conditions. But unless they start off in that condition, they don't have those genes switched on. They're not programmed for other than where they land and where they have to grow all their life. But if we take that one and we put it in better, we see what that plant can do. And that really, it made me understand so many things. I understood how come when we bought a plant and we brought it to our farm with soil like this or you know even more gravelly, how come that plant just, it languished? It's never able to do much. Well, we did the reverse programming, or at least we bought a plant that's reverse programmed. Because most growers say, I wanna start my plants in the absolute best soil I can, you know, so that we get a quicker plant and it's growing faster. And that's okay, as long as you'll take that plant and plant it in a similarly good soil or great soil or better, then it will perform. But when it goes backwards, when it's programmed for more and it has less, yee, it's what we had observed. And then it was like, that makes so much sense. That makes sense. So if you grow seeds, Direct seeding is good because the plant will have to grow where the conditions are. But if you can, even do that Mr. Fields experiment with some programmed 
and some not, you'll be able to see a side-by-side -side comparison. How well did that work? And I want to see, that's one of my next experiments to do is to apply that grow, especially trees, especially fruit trees in those kind of conditions and see what is possible because seeds have so much potential that is not unlocked. And I believe we can get two, five, probably 10 times the results on some fruit trees if we do things that are not common knowledge. So consider programming seeds and certainly consider how you can get reverse program. You can buy plants or you can grow plants in good and put them in worse soil. So avoid that. That's the first thing. Try not to do that. Or if you start seeds, at least start them in a soil that's, if you do in trays, put them in a similar soil to where they're going to be. But try to put them in a worse soil to where they're going to be. Imagine a tomato plant that'll grow 10, 12 feet high and produce 500 pounds of tomatoes. Absolutely, that's possible. But if you get into perennial plants where you have that luxury of two months of programming and then transplant, so think of perennial plants, think of perennial shrubs or even trees, that's where you'll see that result long-term really shine. So programming seeds, wow, what potential to unlock from seeds. Remember that.